Of course, explaining the disappearance of the armoured medieval knight on the battlefield is not as simple as saying firearms were invented. As we've seen throughout the series, equipping a knight with his armour was a time-consuming and expensive process, let alone training him from boyhood all the way through squiredom to knighthood. And you've got the horses as well. His destriers go from young horses that are barely trained to incredibly efficient battlefield platforms that a lance can be used from in anger. All of this took time, money and a huge amount of expertise to get that fighting man on the battlefield. People being paid to fight for you has always been a staple of the medieval battlefield. And of course, capturing people and ransoming them was a very important factor of the tactics of the time, as we've talked about earlier. But towards the end of the medieval period, more and more mercenaries were fighting and fewer and fewer people were actually fighting because of their feudal obligations. And so we get the development of what are called free companies. These are armed and equipped soldiers. Some of them might have been noble. Maybe they've been thrown off the land or maybe they've lost their land or maybe they've given it up because they want to fight. Others may have looked like the nobility. They may have looked like knights and they've got the equipment and they've got the men around them and they adopt the airs and graces of the armoured knight. But actually, if you looked into it, maybe they weren't actually noble by birth. But still, they formed what are called free companies. And this is where the term freelance comes from. If you remember, a lance actually describes the group of soldiers that would fight. The key element was the armoured lanceman at the front, the knight himself, but he would have wingmen and supporting soldiers as well. That was called a lance. And the term freelance describes an element of these free companies. They would search the country looking for war because that's how they made their money. Of course, the advantage to a medieval king of not having a standing army was that he saved money if he wasn't fighting in a war. So the free companies were a resource to be drawn upon in times of need. After the end of the War of the Roses, of course, there had been groups of armed men who'd been fighting for their whole adult lives. In fact, some of them were more or less born into battle and had been fighting for 30 or 40 years. And uh, they were incredibly influential. They were the army of the time, but they didn't need to fight anymore. They didn't need to be paid to fight on the shores of England. So they were encouraged to leave on adventure. They were sent to the northern city-states of what became Italy and they were paid as mercenaries to fight there. And there are famous stories of a mismatch between the way both groups used to fight. The Italian city-states used to manoeuvre and they'd have slightly more stylized battles. They'd still wear armour, they still did a bit of fighting, but they had a lot of gold and jewellery on their armour. But they weren't actually expected to have a close-up slaughter of one man against another, which the English soldiers had been used to for the whole of their adult life. So you have a situation where there are two Italian armies manoeuvring and posing around each other, one of which has hired a third army of English mercenaries to assist them. The English suddenly realise that they're actually better fighters. The English first demand that their opponents actually pay them not to fight. Then they turn on their Italian allies and demand that they pay as well, an entire army being paid by both sides not to fight. Brilliant way of making money, and many people became incredibly rich and then came back to England as influential and very strong and savvy political soldiers of the time. The effectiveness and supremacy of the armoured knight on the medieval battlefield was already in decline because of the change in tactics and weaponry, particularly of the citizen militias. And that was only made worse by the introduction of the firearm. As the knight's effectiveness on the battlefield declined, along with his feudal obligations, so there was a rise in the notions of chivalry and the more romantic side of knighthood. What had been started by 12th century Christian monks to control the savagery on the battlefield of the fighting person, so the pageantry and romance and glory of the tournament was built up. This was, if you like, a fake kind of battle. It was still hard work, people still died, and it was tough to do, but it was a very, very stylized form. 
of performing a knight's duties. Eventually, as military structures changed and the way battles were fought, so the role of the knight on the battlefield arguably completely disappeared. But the role of knighthood didn't change. It's just that knights started to emphasize other aspects of knighthood. Their roles as administrators, their roles as justices, their roles in politics became a more and more important aspect of knighthood. And of course, today, we still have knights and dames. We have men and women who are granted knighthood status by the crown. So the ability of people to fight on the battlefield is not necessarily the defining trait of a modern knight. So the knight never actually went away. What started as a way of controlling a brutal fighting man on the battlefield has become a way of rewarding good service to society. Knighthood has always been a nebulous concept and it continues to change even today. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Don't forget to use that notification button and we'll see you next time. Thank you.